to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. Back with you on this fine Tuesday, whenever you're listening. We're recording here early morning, fresh off of a split. Monday Night Football. Oh, it was not split. Experience. Yeah, it was we, not split. We had no, what was... we should have, which is one really good Monday Night Football game. That's all that the NFL gave us. One game. Yeah, I watched uh, watched the heck out of that Lions Seahawks game. That was a great game. It was awesome. Really impressive performance by everyone? Seattle in that game. Yeah, I mean, ev everyone was awesome in that game. Well. I guess Laporta was okay. Four for fifty. No, yeah, I mean on this uh, in this economy. Better. Yeah, yeah, no, that's in no. this economy. Four, Laporta, I take it back. He was amazing. I received multiple tweets saying, "Why do I feel so good that Laporta was four for fifty-seven? That's where you're at, bro. Yeah. Um, welcome in. Happy to be back with you. Appreciate you guys holding it down yesterday. And uh, we'll jump in with what I'm observing in Deucer's Alley. Yeah, oh, there it is. Oh, hey! <laughs> Hold up that jersey, Josh. Let us see. Oh, we Papa have, Josh yeah. is uh, paying his comeuppance as a former Saints fan uh, losing to Kyle's Falcons. <laughs> yeah, go, is, ahead, go ahead and stand up. I want to oh, see. He oh, is, a full display? Yeah, Michael um, Penix. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I got the Michael Penix jersey on. Yeah. And his face is painted beautiful black and red. He's the future. Josh, so, like Penix is the future and Josh is a future Falcons fan. Wow, how do you feel, Josh? Go Dirty Birds. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, did you have to say that too? Uh, well, I mean, here's what it also means. It means that Jason hasn't had to put a W on That's that right. on that uh, Saints thermometer behind him. So That's you're right. I could just start throwing these Ws away because the Saints are never winning again. And good for you. Your hair is safe. <laughs> well, he's I, just naturally yeah. losing the hair right now instead of unnaturally. Right. I'm I am I am progressing towards completion of this bet without a razor. Right. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to check out the uh the various aesthetic bets being made by the fantasy footballers. We have uh we got those games to talk about and the implications of some of the quarterbacking. Yeah, let's get through the sadness first. The Titans in the Miami game. Uh Let's see here, starting quarterback Tyler Huntley threw the ball 22 times. He ended up with 96 passing yards. That's a full game. It's a full game. Will Levis supermaned himself out of the game. So then we got Mason Rudolph. So I had watched, you know, watching Tennessee. It's like ah, these first few weeks. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure it can get worse for the Titans for for Levis. But that was very wrong. That was very, very wrong. Mason Rudolph came in. He threw the ball 17 times. He had 85 passing yards. So it was any receiver on either side of these teams just had no chance at all. People None. obviously are are upset about Calvin Ridley or Jalen Waddle. It's like you, you cannot blame players who uh, – these backup quarterbacks, they really – they really are they, NFL uh, caliber. They suck. I mean, you, you tweeted something about why can't backup quarterbacks run an NFL offense, and I mean, we have said in recent weeks we don't even have enough starters that can yeah. run an NFL offense. So Mason Rudolph and Tyler Huntley, after two weeks with Miami, wasn't going to get the job done. And Mike McDaniel came out and he was like, "I'm going to paraphrase okay. his thoughts from the game." It was basically. Ooh, that didn't look like it looked in practice. <laughs> it was it was, ba it was basically like we thought oh. we thought we had it figured out in practice, oh, and it man. looked nothing like it. But go yeah, on. Yeah, the, I will tell you what, man. Lafleur is did a heck of a job putting yes. Will Levis, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, Malik Willis, yes. um, as a starter, and 
you know, designing an offense to get the job done. Um, McDonald's over here. He's. I mean, he, I don't know if Tua is the Big greatest. Daniel. If if Tua is the greatest <laughs> quarterback of all time, but what you have seen is that with without him, there is an ineptitude that ruins everybody for fantasy. I don't blame. Like I, I know. I think Andy, you'll very much disagree with me, but I don't blame anyone. And I think I would be willing, if I had any other good options, to take even Tyreek Hill and and bench him um, while this is the quarterback play. It, 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 if you if you're talking about a guy who can't get to a hundred total yards in a game, that is now now you know slice it up, distribute that across. You're talking about if a quarterback can get to a hundred passing yards, and you have to distribute that. Right. I mean, what you weren't talking about Tyreek not getting to a hundred. Oh gosh, no, he would never get to a hundred with with this kind of quarterback play. I mean, Tyreek was three for nineteen. Jalen uh, Waddle. Yeah, Waddle's Waddle. four for thirty six. Yeah, I mean there 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 was just nothing he of can, value. The very right, the very beginning of the game, there was a a really solid uh, mid range completion to Waddle, and it was oh hey, maybe we're gonna we be knew, okay. We knew that the Tyreek game was gonna be a challenge, no matter the quarterback, because of Legarius Sneed in the matchup. We knew that the Titans, about four seconds into the game, could have won three to nothing had they just run the football the entire game. So this particular game. You kind of uh, – you wish you hadn't watched it. What it you didn't perform for fantasy outside of Pollard, but I don't want to leave Ridley there uh, just in the sense that we're four weeks in. Levis got knocked out of this game. Levis has not been good. The – you know, Callahan came out and said, he's our guy. He's going to be the starter. Levis? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's already come out and defended – well, because the way they won this game was not making a mistake on offense, which – they proved they could do, right? Like, don't make a mistake. Mason Rudolph, just don't make a mistake, and you're going to win the ball game that's, against the Dolphins. That's not going to work. But you're going into a bye week now. So you've got four weeks of Calvin Ridley, one exceptional week, three disappointing weeks. I'm just curious, like, you can bring up all the names, Waddle, Hill, and then Ridley in particular. Those three fantasy assets, how do you view them over the next six weeks? The next Cause six Because a, a bet on Ridley, a bet that I made was a bet on Levis and games that they need to throw the football and throwing for more than 100 yards. Yeah, and I, I do believe personally that Levis can do that um, when he comes back from the bye. It's Indy, Buffalo, Detroit. Those are absolutely fine matchups to throw the ball against. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm fine with Ridley. Obviously, I'm not going to drop him um, heading into the bye. This is, though, the first week that I know my League of Record team, I am struggling like crazy with bye weeks and injuries just to roster enough humans uh, to start. Yeah, and you are already destroyed, and then you're losing David Montgomery to bye. And Lad McConkey. So, I mean, yeah. I was starting Lad McConkey people every week. Yeah, me and Jay are in a... <laughs> it's a good thing we're talking about waivers. Yeah, it's an important show today. Uh, how about the other football game that was... Well, hold on, hold on. Uh, it's okay, Jay. You threw out. You wouldn't blame people for benching Tyreek Hill. Uh, let me just pull up the Miami schedule real quick. So next week is the. Oh gosh, it's on the road against the Patriots. Uh, the pa Kyle has said the Patriots are one point favorites. the The line has opened at thirty five and a half. That's the over under. That is blarf. <laughs> uh, what about? What about Devon Achan? The Miami, oh, yeah, he got deleted, too. The Miami Dolphins leading rusher in attempts. Right. But, 10 for 15. But, but not in yards. Yeah, I mean. Dead I, last on his team. So he is, because he is an undersized back, this is w w the reason I was madly in love with Achan last year and this year is because he fits this scheme so perfect. They're able to create space with that zone running scheme, and when you give that guy a little bit of space, it's lights out. But in this world where there is no threat down the field, there is no – the whole defense is at the line of scrimmage. There is no lane for him. So, like, you saw Jalen Wright not be good but have a little bit more success, the rookie come in, because he can try to, like, just power through a couple tackles. Devon Achan is an amazing talent, and he can outrun anyone on the field. But he can't run over people or through people. And when there's three guys in front of him at all times, it's very, very difficult. I – uh, you know, you you have what three targets? That's not enough for him. Um, so, 
he is another guy. You just got to change expectations until you get the quarterback back. Which we do. Uh, we had a report yesterday that Tua is currently symptom-free, appears to be on track to return to the field as soon as week eight. Now, again, that is currently. It's This is concussion stuff. We've had players be symptom-free. They go to a practice, and all of a sudden the symptoms are – right back and magnified so they have a week it's at least good news right now they have a week six bye week and then indianapolis arizona after the after the break oh man it's brutal so that was game one game yeah. two 42 29 way high, better highest scoring game of the year Dude, the lions and the seahawks man they just they give us good stuff geno smith threw the ball 56 times Career Jared high. Goff threw the ball 18 times <laughs> and completed 18 passes, breaking the NFL record. Unbelievable. So he was perfect. And I don't know if you saw Dan Campbell. <laughs> and he caught a touchdown. Dan Campbell gave the game ball to two other players. And before he realized later on that Jared Goff was perfect in the game and said he felt bad about it. I mean, 18 passes. Who, who can't complete 18 in a row? Come you know on. what the record was before, though? It was 10 for 10 by Kurt Warner. So what? Eight, 18 oh, to finish a game. To, for an entire game. Yeah. To finish a game perfect. Gibbs, Montgomery, Jamison Williams, Laporta, Amon Ross, St. Brown, even Tim Patrick getting yeah. in on the action. Yeah, he did. Fireball Jones himself. So, great game by all Lions offensive weapons. They were pretty unstoppable. And then Geno Smith, almost 400 passing yards. Kenneth Bone oh, Walker. Man. Yes. Ken Walker, three hey. touchdowns, 80 yards on the ground, and on just 12 carries. It was... So fantastic to watch. I I feel for many out there. Look, I had Kenneth Walker on my bench too. Coming off of that injury, going into Monday night one, I don't even know for sure that he's going to play. I, despite reports, weird things are happening this year. So, look, I, I really do stand by the – I think the right thing to do was try to get your other option in there. If you held out, the Lions you, are the number one defense right. against running back. So this was like, uh, I I just don't. It's hard to get Kenneth Walker in there, but this is such incredible news. If you have Walker and you're like, oh, he was on my bench. I, no man, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. The dude came out healthy. The guy looked oh my unbelievably gosh. great. Caught the, four his, passes. His double. Uh, I don't even know what to call the, the double flip. The double flip. He's like. Full on look like wrestling moves. He straight up <laughs> somersaulted yes, over a he guy. Did. A full somersault to With Lucio Libre. Going. It was incredible. And he is he is without a doubt so he is infinitely better than Zach Charbonnet. I mean, when you see these guys, there's no doubt who needs to be on the field. Every time that Charbonnet is there, and Charbonnet is a I fine thought NFL Charbonnet player. Charbonnet looked great last no, night. I agree. He's a fine NFL player. Charbonnet he picks up blitzes. He's a great pass catcher. Um, he's a fine NFL player, but when you watch Charbonnet run and then you watch Walker run, you go, oh, okay, yeah. that guy gets to the edge. That guy breaks these tackles. He's, uh, Walker's so good. Last week was the career worst game by James Conner for the Cardinals against this Detroit defensive front, and then Walker goes 12 for 80 with three touchdowns. I so thought he was going to get a fourth. It was super impressive, and – and everybody was celebrating in that game, unless, of course, you benched Walker, which was understandable, and now you should be happy that, one, didn't get hurt, yep. right? That was the mm -hmm. risk, too. An oblique yes. injury, re-injury opportunity, didn't happen, and the team looks good, and the game was fun, and everybody celebrated. And all the wide receivers were absolutely fine. I mean, Lockett was, you know, 5 for 61. That's okay on nine targets. Uh, JSN, only 51 yards, but he had eight receptions, and 12 targets, very, very involved. And DK Metcalf has looked like, you if know. you have to throw it 56 times yeah, in the everyone, future, everyone's that's going to be, be delicious. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right. The Will Levis injury was an AC joint sprain. And Bill Cal uh, Brian Callahan, not Bill, Brian. Uh, said Levis will be the starter when he's healthy. Shane Steichen said the team is not considering placing Jonathan Taylor on injured reserve with the ankle injury. If you hear Jonathan Taylor and ankle in the same sentence, yes. you start to get paranoid. Yeah, PTSD from years gone by where he struggled with this before. And it was like if he played, he re-injured himself. 
he didn't play a lot of games. It was a originally reported high ankle sprain. Right. Mm -hmm. Minor. So, mild. Or mild, sorry. Mild high ankle. I, this Not a spicy one. Not caliente. No. <laughs> we were going for the same busted joke. <laughs> yeah. Busted. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, did you guys talk about this we yesterday? We didn't know. This broke after the show. The report that came out that got everybody really flustered was the fact that he's got Achilles tendonitis in both legs. Kyle Shanahan basically said it started in one. He started compensating, got it in both. It's mostly been one that's bothering him. I've I've had this injury, and I've had it do this exact thing before where you compensate for it, and then you get Achilles tendonitis in the other leg. So I, I've, I've gone through Did you through. go to Germany? I did not go to Germany. You should have. No. It was not really an option for me. Uh, at the time, oh. I think it was more of an Advil situation. Uh, you went. <laughs> I went to I Walgreens, went, not went to the pharmacy. <laughs> Walgreens, not Frankfurt. Um, this is even though it's it's new information for us. It's not anything new or different. They've this. It's not like now they're like, oh my gosh, now it's in the second leg, and it and it was. It's, it's spreading. spreading. Yeah, it's <laughs> contagious. Yeah, who else on the team has it? Oh now? my gosh, yeah. Don't run by any other running backs. <laughs> Jordan Mason, stay away. So, look, we're waiting on Christian McCaffrey. Good news. We've been waiting all season. He's been a wasted pick. If you are like Al Borland over there that spent the high drive capital on Jordan Mason, you are getting – You're living the good life. Yeah, you're living you're living life. And and to, to Mike's credit, unfortunately, always unfortunately, but Mike, like I tried to – I have Christian McCaffrey. I had him in Dynasty. I tried to go trade for Jordan Mason. And you sent – I thought some, some you said like the beginning ones were like, eh, I don't need to do this. But then there was a truly caliente. Yeah, I said like, was, I don't remember what it was. It was a one. Oh, yeah, I said it's a one. It was a first round rookie pick. And you offered a first yeah, round did. And, and he I turned, turned it, it down. down. Wow. And, the, and you know what? This was tell, pre this great. Was, no, this was after, I mean, this was like right after week one. So oh, okay. okay, thing, okay. Things had not escalated to where they are now, but it was like, both of us are making a, a bet, and he was betting a pick. I bet that, oh, I'm, I'm going to keep Jordan Mason. I'm going to take this guy and see if I can get another championship. That's what I was going to point was, out, is your mindset ooh. around it was, that's more than a fair trade. Yes. But if, if McCaffrey doesn't come back anytime soon, Mason is a lottery ticket that gives me a chance to win, and that was the choice you made, and I hate you. David Njoku. Expected to practice this week. This hey. is very important for one of the league's worst offenses. Uh, and for the, the fantasy football's position. worst position. Tank Dell, Joe Mixon, both considered day-to-day. -day. Tank Dell expected to be back. I think Joe Mixon will be back too. He was practicing. I was very, very – I was watching this closely. And so I watched the practice videos. He seemed very jovial and happy. They kept him out one more week. They need him back badly. We have Bijan Robinson limited with a hamstring injury. Now they That's are not good. It's not, but this is these are estimated reports because they are the Thursday night matchup. So that's we get the Monday and Tuesday. They'll say, "Well, we're guessing." Remember, I told you my son accidentally drafted Brian Robinson <laughs> instead yes. of Bijan in, with the fourth pick how's, in the draft. How's that going? Great. <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> Brian Robinson has been so much better than Bijan. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Looks like a genius. Um, and Brian I'm, Robinson is currently the running back 11 with 66.1 fantasy points. Bijan running back 20 with 54.9. What a world. So, And it's a Thursday game, so if Bijan was limited in actual practice, that would change things for Tyler Algier and Thursday night's matchup. And for Bijan, who Bijan and Brees Hall, who were kind of the unanimous top two picks behind McCaffrey, you're over, not over three, no, Brees but you're been. not happy. No, Bre I mean, Brees has been underwhelming. Let me go. This week was, this past week was terrible, but RB Compa 15, 15 or 16 points, 21, 16 points. Brees has been, yeah, having, Brees has been okay. Having, having had him in, in both my main leagues, I was thrilled with Brees yeah. coming into this last week. I, I never felt bad. Now, obviously this last week, stunk um but he but i mean we talked about it last week on the show before the game about j just braylon allen or just about Brees's performances so far and braylon allen and Bijan's performances so far neither really bringing super top end like 
not league winner numbers. You Certainly know? not. Like you're happy because running backs, you're happy, but um, it's it's been weird. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm happier with David Montgomery. <laughs> you know, right, like they, that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, Alexander Madison. Uh, Antonio Pierce says he deserves more reps and he'll get them. Zamir White has been. Yeah, do you drop him now? Because I have a couple leagues where with bye weeks, I need to put like a body on my team, like Justice Hill. Do I don't you know. Drop I, I him don't know for you, Justice Hill. I don't know if you can drop a guy who scored three fantasy points, five fantasy points, three fantasy points, and three fantasy. So points. yeah, you might want to hold on to that a little longer. It. And that was while he was the main starter. It's a weird world where uh, where you're s dropping a starting running back. The, the advice for that is almost never. It's simply just bench him, see if the situation But now he's around. not a starter. But I yeah, I, I mean, this might, is like dropping Miles Sanders last year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's fair. 13 opportunities, 15 opportunities, 18 opportunities this last week. That's what he He had 18. He had 18 opportunities oh my scored gosh. scored 3 fantasy points. What? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is not working. Oh, uh, Jonathan man. Gannon said Trey McBride is in um, concussion protocol, but looking good. Okay, hopefully. And then he's we back. found out that Nick Chubb's going to be practicing. They opened the window to bring him back. This is, I mean, this is interesting. It it is. I would expect him to be using the twenty one day practice window. I don't think this is some guys when they get activated, it's like they're they're ready, they're healed up. Um, from what I've seen, the the medical doctors that that I follow, I think it's kind of that week seven expectation. But we'll we'll keep monitoring the news for you. And then Jonathan Brooks's practice window to return has not been opened yet, so we're not expecting him back quite. Nope, quite yet. And then uh, there you go. So that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. We'll take a break, and it is waiver day, so we're going to bring those names to you shortly. All right, the bye weeks are here. Uh, we've got Lions, Titans, Eagles, and Chargers on bye, so it's time to jump into the waiver wire. Welcome to the waiver wire, presented by Amazon Business. All right, so uh, the aforementioned David Montgomery, Jason, you don't get him this week. No Jameer, <laughs> no Jameer Gibbs. We were just talking before the show. Those two guys are they've been uh, unbelievable. RB seven and eight. And Gibbs and Montgomery, and consistent every week. Every single week, both those guys have 15 points. That's it's, just what they do. It's really nice, but not this week. They'll have zero this week, I think. That is correct. You're, I mean, a lot of – No Saquon. Between the Eagles and the Lions, um, there are a lot of fantasy assets that you have been relying on that are not there. So, big, big waiver week. So, let's start with those running back pickups. Kareem Hunt – here we are. I, I, you seem to be what the remainder of this year is going to be, and I know that we could have different opinions on whether Clyde comes back to impact it, but my gut right now is this is going to be mostly Kareem Hunt. That That's how I feel as well. I, I'm shocked uh, when I saw that he is only rostered in 37% of leagues. Um, obviously, you know, I made the bet last week. We, we had the hysterical bet last week, Andy, or the the trade of Carson Steele and Zach Charbonnet, both of us betting on who's going to disappear first. And that was the, holding up the Back to the Future photo, and both guys disappear from the photo frame yeah, exactly. after the trade is over with. Yeah, so that was irrelevant. Um, Thanks for the pick swap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, Kareem Hunt, I think, is a very, very, very valuable pickup. We don't know how long it's going to be until Pacheco is back. It's not the four weeks. Uh, it could be the whole season. Like yeah, I would not. I, I, oh, that's the I'm, bet. I'm yeah. going on whole season. Yeah, and so – Kareem Hunt, from here on out, is a guy that I know he has lost it and he's not his former self. I'm not saying he's going to be a top five fantasy option like his rookie season. But, you know, last year, he had, this is a guy who, when he lost it and looked slow, he had nine rushing touchdowns last year for the Cleveland Browns. And so I do think touchdowns will be there. Uh, the passing work will be there. The The opportunities to touch the ball for the Kansas City Chiefs is, is going to be um, hot and heavy. So... To me, if he is on your waivers, he's my number one pickup of the week and across that, all positions. What does that quantify, Mike, as? Like, what would you spend fab-wise on Kareem Hunt? And the fact that they they lost Rasheed Rice, their pass catchers are limited, the fact that Kareem Hunt can catch the ball well, and he ran for 4.9 a carry in week one for him, his week one. 
What would you spend up on Kareem Hunt if you needed a so running back? So if you need a running back, I mean, Kareem Hunt is probably a 30-plus percent type of a player. I'm not as convinced as you guys. I do. I think Clyde could be a huge problem. That, but, I mean, look, Kareem Hunt still ranked really high for me. I'm going to be aggressive trying to get him, just saying I'm not as – I'm not as convinced it will just it'll be Kareem Hunt as uh, like the game started it was Carson Steele he was the starter and he fumbled on his first carry I it's it's hard to not so is this just think a, that that was a part of the transition to Kareem that week Clyde is going to come off the NFI list this week is there a chance that this situation is just nasty yes and and very. more fab will get spent and wasted. There is definitely the chance for that. Um, you know, Clyde comes in and maybe Carson Steele gets a second chance and it's a three-headed timeshare. There, that, that is a uh, – And Samaje, Samaje Piran was still on the field for 40% of the snaps for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, all of that is a is a possibility. Um, obviously, you have to call your shot. And if you feel like it's a really high possibility that, that you know, Clyde comes in and steals a bunch of work, then don't overspend on Kareem Hunt. I am, I am fairly confident that – Kareem Hunt, who knows this system well, who's played successfully with Mahomes in the past, this is a team that needs something to happen, with, especially they with do. Rushy Rice going down. I, I, I'm going to think that they're going to lean on Hunt and try to see if he's still got it. Well, let me let me ask you how that compares to your confidence in this next player who is on pace for 68 receptions at the running back position for almost 700 receiving yards, who's averaging 5.4 an attempt, and had mostly been completely ignored to the point where he is sitting on waiver wires in the majority of leagues. Justice Hill. <laughs> He's not, on pace for 700-plus receiving yards. I'm not super thrilled about Justice Hill. I mean, week one was... Wow. I'm not either. Uh, I, I mean, he scored six fantasy points two weeks ago, four fantasy points two weeks before that. I mean, when you look at the whole season numbers and you average them the way that you were talking about, it looked good because this last week... He had 78 receiving yards and uh, six receptions, but that was also a game, you know, a, a primetime game against Buffalo, this high score game and, and at home. I don't know that he's going to be someone you can rely on week in and week out for sustenance. Sustenance is not found on the waiver wire at running back, but opportunity is. And this is a team that his snap count was super reduced because of the blowout and he still put up those numbers. I think Justice Hill is the kind of player where instead of betting on a week or two, if you need a flex option, an emergency start, somebody at running back to, you know, you're not betting on one week, I think Justice Hill, they love him. He's going to be involved, and you're still going to have opportunities. It's not going to be amazing, but nobody is on the, this waiver wire. I mean, he played more than 50% of snaps the first two weeks. I like that. He's He is – Pretty widely available. Uh, where the roster percent we have is twenty eight percent. If you're looking at, uh, like taking a gamble on a guy who can be a weekly flex play, I would be looking more at Chase Brown. Who look, Chase Brown's heavier? It's a higher roster percentage than Justice Hill, but I would take the chance on Chase Brown. The, the he has cut into the the opportunities. What's going on, Giggles? I'm sorry. And listen, when I'm in the middle of breaking down Justice Hill and I receive a dynasty trade offer from two of the producers in the office <laughs> okay. that includes Justice Hill. Yeah, nice. I just found that to be quite comedic. So, it, but like between those two guys, if Chase Brown were there, I would it would be easily on the Chase Brown side for me. And So give then, me your top 3 names right now. So is it, it just, is it Brown it, over Hunt? It depends on what you it depends on what you need. Um I, th I think Kareem would be at the top of the names we've talked about so far. Uh, so far, look, uh, the next two matchups for Rico Dattle are bad. It's Pittsburgh and Detroit, but the guy is and then a bye week, and then a bye week. But he is, he's the starting running back for the Dallas Cowboys. And he's been the, the workload has been increasing. I know I'm the only one over here calling for Rico Dattle, but he is. Like long term, he'll be the starter. Long for, term, he will be the starter. And and when I looked like at Zimmer him, White. when I looked at him for where I'm ranking him in my in my waiver wire rankings, I certainly thought, okay, his opportunity has come. He is the starter. He is getting the ma majority of the work. But because it's solely because of those matchups, like when I the try to pick these, bad. when I try to pick these guys up and rank them, 
I'm literally thinking, who am I actually going to put in my lineup? And Rico Dowdle's not getting in my lineup this week against Pittsburgh. He's not getting in my lineup the next week against Detroit, and then he's on bye week. So I'm fine letting the next basically month go by with someone else having him. For me, my number two running back behind Hunt is actually Trey Sermon, who's completely available. He's available in 96% of leagues. Obviously, that is a little bit of a risk. Maybe Jonathan Taylor is fine, and his ankle is, you know, he, he plays this week. It was said to be mild. But if he is out, now you're talking about a complete starting running back um, who that's is the wide, Thursday night game? Who is widely no, that's available. No, sorry. Um, and that's going to be against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, you know, haven't looked great so far this year. Yeah, so Sermon is is fully available if you're looking for a one week start, you're saying? Yeah, he's a, he's yeah. A, and he's a great start. What about start Tyler this Algier? Week. Because he could end up being. So he's very interesting. We'll know more by the time you need to make your waiver claims based on today's practice. Um, Bijan, Mike, and I were looking through the the box score to see like when was his last carry because we saw a lot of Algier at the end of the game, but w you can't really tell no. how injured he was because what happened to the game script at the end of the game was a little weird. But it it was a chunk of time at the end of that game where Bijan was not playing. So Algier is very interesting because. If Bijan misses, that just that catapults him up to a you know a, a a workhorse. Going back to Taylor for a second, just to re remember that you know no how no matter how good you think you feel after an ankle sprain, these players generally, if you miss a game, you might miss more than one. Yes. So, you know, if if he ends up missing in Trey Sermon, you think you're getting a one week rental, but maybe you get him against Tennessee and Miami. The following two weeks it's possible and if you are the jonathan taylor manager you need to spend up oh for on getting sure. trey sermon this week because he's going to be available and where everybody else is running after maybe a bigger performance by somebody else like justice hill or chase brown you probably need to spend your money on trey sermon fair yeah i think that's uh that's fair i mean we you always have to take it into consideration your team needs there's going to be and and look at your opponent and look at your league as well that's one of the reasons why we built the ultimate dashboard to have kind of the league specific waiver wire list is because it's not one size fits all. Like that's what makes these tough is we could come on here and give you a one, two, three, four, five, but that's not true in every league. No, it's really not. Uh, the difference between Justice Hill and Trey Sermon is enormous. If I don't need a start this week, I don't need Trey Sermon. Justice Hill looks like he is going to be a you know, a role player, a role player who is involved every single week going on the rest of the season. Um, yeah, so you've got to you've got to just look at your team, look at your league, and and yeah, if you use the ultimate dashboard, it'll show you uh, specifically if people are rostered, who, which which other manager in your league is rostering these players. Um, you know what you should be spending on these players. A bunch of stuff specific to you and your league. All right, uh, we good to turn the page to wide receiver for right now. All the waiver wire rankings are on the website too, thefantasyfootballers.com, and I, the custom rankings are part of jointhefoot.com. Yeah, I would just throw out uh, Tank Bigsby's name in the sense that yeah. he is widely available, and he looked awesome 90 yards um, last week on seven carries. I feel like we're going to bring his name up every other week on this show in the waiver wire segment because I think every other week he'll have a big game. Well, to me, it's not about the big game. It's about the potential injury. This is just when you see a guy who looks good behind a a workhorse. He's, the, the, he's really only played two games. The opening week, which he was 12 for 73, gets hurt the next week, and he's still recovering after that. And then he was 7 for 90. Like, I'm I'm with Jason. of he, He's not really high on my priority list, but Travis Etienne missed, what, the whole first quarter? Got, got a little bit shook up. It's just about what, what Tank Bigsby would become – would be he's just a stash he he would be yes yeah I, I, yeah he's not even a flex play at this point but contingent upside is is humongous i am looking at wide receiver drop candidates before i get into the names that we should pick up and it is <laughs> it's very difficult it's rough, to man. read these names but let's talk about who we like this week i have my under the radar will cost you the least to get the best return name Hmm. I'm, I I, okay. I think the big I've got one as well. The big spender is going to be Dontavian Wicks. Yes. Yeah. And I think he's worth that. I think I agree. Dontavian Wicks is well worth it with Christian Watson missing time. Now Watson's injury originally looked like 
you might not see him for a long time. You know, if he's back on the field soon, you're back into the roll the dice beyond Jaden Reed. Is it Dobbs? Is it Wicks? Is it Watson situation? But against the Rams this week. In Arizona the following week and Houston the, yeah, the week Wick, after that. Wicks looks real. I mean, he was so That's good last juicy. week. That's what's going to cost you a lot. My discount value is Xavier Leggett. Mm. Yep. Because no, with Thielen, with Thielen gone, it was very obvious that Leggett was going to be heavily involved beyond Deontay Johnson, who's dealing with a groin injury. But ten targets for Leggett, he dropped two passes. He really should have caught. He was still six for sixty-six and a touchdown. Oh, Mark of the Beast. There it is. <laughs> like, that took a while. It was took writing, a while. I was writing something down while you said that. I <laughs> only looked at one man when that happened. <laughs> okay, thank you. But I think Xavier Leggett, especially even with like um, this matchup with the Bears where they have an elite corner that will be covering Deontay Johnson, I think Xavier Leggett will cost you nothing, and he's a great start. I yeah. think he is. he will be much cheaper than Wicks, and he's he's a rookie. He's going to improve as the season goes along. And as long as uh, Andy Dalton remains the quarterback for the Panthers, Leggett is a – he's my number two wide receiver right behind Wicks. Wow. Yeah. That I mean, it, it's exciting. We love the talent of Leggett. He had a couple of bad drops, but that, that makes sense. Um, for me, there's a couple of guys that I have up in that same tier at least. Josh Downs for sure. He's a good player. He um, even if, like the the latest report on Anthony Richardson uh, that I saw this morning was he might he might be playing this weekend. Yeah, no, I th I think I mean they said he will miss a little time or none. So this weekend is in play. Obviously, if Joe Flacco plays, Josh Downs I think is a is a really really good um, play this week. You saw what was on display in preseason. You saw what was on display in camp. Like Josh Downs was the talk of camp. Yeah, and you finally got to see him on the field. With the trustworthy pass. And with Flacco, if if he does have Flacco again, nine targets last week turned into eight for eighty two and a touchdown. And when they interviewed Flacco afterwards, they he he just brought up Josh Downs as like that type of player that is always where you need him to be. So I, I think he's a good pickup. And this guy's mostly rostered, but Darnell Mooney's been he's been very good. Sure. So he he is a weekly flex option right now who is still available on a lot of waivers. I'm gonna be flexing him this week. With Gibbs out, so that's happening. Did you see, uh, Andy, I don't know if you know this, uh, Bo, Bo Nix threw s for 60 yards last week? I did. I did see that. Do you know how many receiving yards Cortland Sutton had last week? He's a name here on our waiver list. I believe all of them. He had 60 yards. Did yeah. he? Uh, he didn't one, have all of them, actually, because... Because there was like a negative... At one point uh, in the game, he had more yards than Nix had thrown for. He had that 60 is, of the 53 passes. Because, oh, my God. Saw I that believe, from Adam I'm Azer. just going to confirm it, but Troy Franklin, the rookie wide receiver for hey, the Denver Broncos... <laughs> you do yeah. want that? Yeah, oh, yeah, we want that. Okay. Hey, uh, he did catch two passes. Mm. He had, my man. He had negative two yards. Ah, oh, darn. <laughs> Hope it's full PPR. <laughs> Um, you know what one name we did not bring up? I've got in, in the waiver list that we should have at running back that I'm going to circle back to. Which then? Because you you you've been sharing stuff about him for weeks, but we didn't talk about Emmanuel Wilson. Oh yes, no, that's a in great name to bring in up. Green Bay. Yes. What was some of the things that you were looking at over the weekend? Because the snap counts, yeah, they had kind of changed a lot. And I think if Jacobs got hurt, he'd be very valuable. It's not even. It's it's not even just Jack uh, Jacobs like changing everything. Emmanuel Wilson, it's been back to a timeshare. You had the week two, Josh Jacobs. We have no idea what else to do with this offense, and uh, Malik Willis is the quarterback, so we're going to give Jacobs the ball thirty times and hope that it works. And it did. The next two weeks, it's been back to the Green Bay timeshare that we saw. For years, with, with when you would get frustrated, like, "Hey, give Aaron Jones the ball more. Stop giving it to AJ Dillon." They did not. They kept. They just kept on giving it to AJ Dillon. And right now, through two weeks, uh, the past two weeks, it's Jacobs and Emmanuel Wilson. I admit, Wilson might be. He. It's a. It's a sketchy flex at best. Is it a priority uh, ad for the Jacobs manager? I or yeah, not if, really? No, I don't think. I don't think this is a. I think if if Jacobs went down right this second, 
Um, you 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 might be forced into what you saw with Jacobs at the beginning of the year, where they just don't have a choice to have a a timeshare because every other running back was injured. But I do think that like when Marshawn Lloyd is back here in a couple of weeks, if Jacobs were to get injured, it would just be a timeshare. This is a coaching but staff I that think wants Wilson a timeshare. Would be the, Wilson would be the leader of the timeshare if Lloyd is back. If yes, I think he'll play over Lloyd. The the rookie has done nothing. Well, sure, he's been. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's he. No, that's what he's done. Has gotten hurt over and over and over. And Wilson has performed for this team. So circling back, Wicks, Mooney, Downs, Leggett, Cortland Sutton is going to get the best of the worst passing offense. Yeah, but boys, Wandale Robinson. Yeah. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. You don't have to watch it. I will not make you watch it. But he goes on the road to play the Seattle Seahawks. Who, it's, a, it's a great pick. They are a very competent uh, offense over there. The, the defense is still TBD, honestly, for Seattle. I, I need to see some more. But uh, with Neighbors in concussion protocol, don't know if he'll be back. But even if Neighbors is back, three of the four weeks, Wandale Robinson has just been an absolute target vacuum. If you're in a PPR of any kind, look, this is he's not a top 20 play. But week one, wide receiver 36. Then what, the wide receiver 30 because he got the touchdown. And then a bad game, but then wide receiver 29. 12 targets week one, 14 targets this past week. If the, the offense, when they're throwing the ball, it's neighbors or it's check it down to Wandale. He's a he's a full PPR type of player. Yes. But if you're in a full PPR league, Wandale Robinson, I mean, they, they're going to throw him the ball a lot, and they throw him guaranteed catches. You do, know, you wanna, do you want to know the targets uh, leaders in the NFL right now? Oh, yeah, let's hear him. I always like doing this after oh, three or four weeks. Neighbors is up there. Malik the is number one mm -hmm. by nine. Jeez. Malik Neighbors. Uh, by the way, I know Ridley's not working out, but like Neighbors is doing, <laughs> Neighbors is doing okay, and Jane Daniels is the number one fantasy quarterback. Yeah. So give me a break, man. <laughs> I'm trying here. It's tough. Malik Neighbors, 52 targets. Nico Collins, 43. Oh, Nico. Amon Ross St. Brown with 39, tied with Deontay Johnson at 39. And number five. Is this Wandale? Is Wandale yeah, Robinson. Wow. So it's rare when the fifth highest target leader is on waivers. Uh, beyond that, it is Cooper Metcalf Sutton at number eight. So kind of wild. Yeah. Um, another name I think that is worthy of bringing up. I have been playing Demarcus Robinson because he's always on the field and the injuries to the other guys. And, you know, maybe it's two, two. There's, there's other p players that are involved. But Jordan Whittington yep. should be rostered. I think he is the right play. Um, if you want to put someone out there, oh really? Yes. Yes. I would play Tutu. So Tutu is, is that stupid? I, no, I don't think it is stupid because Tutu so has stupid. designed uh, plays for him where they put him in motion and he goes down deep down the field. It's like when they want an explosive play, that is Tutu. But if you're looking for like pew, pew, the, the replacement of the the normal first read type targets, you saw Jordan Whittington get a ton of buzz through camp. He's a rookie. Lowly drafted rookie, but everyone was talking about how he was so good in camp, so good, um, and if he gets an opportunity, he'll he'll be great. Well, the opportunity has come, and this week, he went from like two weeks ago, he was 38% of snaps. He wasn't the replacement, but they decided this past week. Okay, yeah, it's not working with Tyler Johnson. I exactly. Tyler Johnson, it's not working, so we're going to give it to um, Jordan Whittington, who played 97% wow. of the snaps. He had eight targets with six for 62. Which, and so that's I, a 28% target share. Yeah, so I, I he it's a, is – It's a breakout week for you. Yes. He is a guy, and I think the matchup against Green Bay um, at home. So I, Jordan I, that's Whittington good, That's is, a good name. I hadn't I realized am, his uh, con contribution snap-wise. I 100% with this, and you should be – if you're looking at – well, his production wasn't what I had hoped for. You know what? Six for 62. You should be grateful because if, if he had – if he was six for sixty-two with a touchdown, he would be the number one or number two wide receiver pickup. And point. right now, you can sneak him in for a little bit cheap on the you, radar. Are you dropping any of these names? That these are the top drop candidates okay, for, coming in from angry people. Okay, oh, man. Roma Dunze <sighs> and Keenan Allen. I would drop Keenan Allen personally, um, but I would not drop Roma Dunze. I. I'd rather have Wicks than both of those guys. Zay Flowers. No. I'd, I'd rather have Wicks. Really? You would yes. drop Zay Flowers for Wicks? Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. I know he 
<clears throat> I know last it's, week. It's not just last. It's the whole offense. It's like what is going on with the Ravens? I don't know. I don't know, but I know that I know that the Green Bay, the Green Bay schedule is the Rams, Arizona, yeah. the next two weeks. It's hard for teams that are one and three or zero oh and four to keep in mind to keep on keeping on, right? Like yeah. Ridley's going into a bye. Are you willing? Who would you drop Ridley for if you had to? I know it'd be easy to say, well, you shouldn't drop Ridley. Drop somebody else. You shouldn't make that move. Trade him. When yeah, I, do what, those things first. But if you had to. Are you dropping Ridley for some of these guys when you are starting one and three and zero and four? I don't feel like you when have I look, a choice. When I look at this list, the only one that would even be questionable would be Dontavian Wicks. Wicks to me has the potential to be a breakout player, to be a difference maker for fantasy. None of these other guys, maybe, maybe, maybe look at, but you know, outside of that, the uh, the other guys have a decent play. And you can start them, but I'm dropping Ridley for that feels very, very difficult. Unless you're out of roster spots, I would not do that. Oh, rumor mill. The rumor mill is buzzing. Breaking news. Uh, breaking rumors, but breaking rumors. The Las Vegas Raiders have begun reaching out to teams to gauge interest in Devonte Adams. Did, did you see? Did you guys I mention think, the comment yesterday, or the uh, the like? Oh, I I didn't we oh, didn't no. mention sorry, it. But I saw sorry, it. but like I know did he just did he so, social so something? somebody somebody Someone posted did. somebody posted <laughs> that De Devontae Adams may have played his last down as a member of the Raiders, which is one of the reasons the business decision. It's one comment. of the reasons why I added Trey Tuck, Trey Tucker everywhere last week. But so you he, don't know you don't know this. News. I don't. You're he gonna love liked this, it. Mike. He liked it. No, no, no. Right? Do you know who liked it? I thought it was Adams. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, no. No, it was someone else. Is it Coach? It's Coach. It's Coach Pierce. It was Pierce? Yes. Liked. The I thought it was Adams. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. The drama. What? I wondered if that hamstring was a wink, wink. Yeah. So uh, Your that. hamstring hurts, Devontae. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Uh, yes, so it does. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, since you do not have an alpha on your team, go get one. He is so expensive, but you're right. I mean, the Jets. The Jets do not have an alpha. Kansas City, come on Kansas down. Kansas City cannot. They don't have the money. They don't. No, the, I, I've okay. been through all the numbers for Kansas City. If you want to know who they're gonna, they, they can get Amari Cooper. We, Amari we Cooper. That they can up get yesterday. Yeah. And um, but but the money for Adams, no chance. I don't think there's any chance Kansas City gets okay. him. But the Jets, because the next name I'm going to bring up on the. Do I drop list? Which the answer is no, everybody. Yeah, it's no. But Garrett Wilson's name being here tells nope. you everything you need to know about the season right now. Brandon Ayuk, no, you don't do that. Nope. But this is where people are at. They've played Garrett for three weeks, four weeks. They've played Ayuk for four weeks, and they've played Ridley for four weeks, and they've gotten one good game out of a, out of 12 opportunities. Yep. Yeah, I'm not – I would not drop those But that players. means that Jacoby Myers and Trey Tucker sure. need to be – pickups because you know Trey Tucker is young explosive talented this week he had a bunch of fantasy points because he got into the end zone he also had six targets um the the problem I have with those guys and you're right uh, Trey Tucker looks really good Jacoby Myers is a solid NFL wide receiver but Denver on the road this week that defense looks really 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 tough then Pittsburgh the following week so, if Devontae Adams is a Raider and he misses a couple weeks with a hamstring, they're bad matchups. They're bad matchups, but but, um, but you've got. I'm still four, playing my guys against the Steelers. You got four quarters. I mean, Josh Downs had a nice game against the Steelers, didn't he? Yeah, so did Pittman. So I mean, I I don't know. I it, look for target leaders on well, these teams. Michael Pittman was the wide receiver 13 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Downs must have been right behind him, or if not, ahead of him. And Joe Flacco, we trust, man. Yeah, let me check. Josh Downs was man, wide receiver nine. Joe yeah, Flacco so two needs, top 12 wide yeah, receivers. I'm not, I'm not scared of the Steelers. Flacco needs to be a full-time starter it's, in the NFL. because dude, it's absurd. The Cleveland Browns letting Joe Flacco walk was absurd. You also saw, you saw the warts, though, too. Well, yeah, yeah, but but uh, look at the NFL. Like, like I don't think the I don't think the the Colts are going to win a ton of games with Joe Flacco. I think it's like it's like Dalton. It's like Dalton in Carolina. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. You're right. I mean, he could be a starter. 
They're probably going to be one this week. I'm I think just the saying, Browns would be better if they had Flacco. The Browns would be better if they had anybody else, pretty much. Well, no, I've seen some quarterbacks. Not Tyler Huntley. Yeah. <laughs> Not Tyler Huntley. Yeah. All right, we got to take a break, come back and talk tight ends, defenses, and our streaming quarterback options. Yeah, I mean, what if you do? What do you do if you have Devonte Adams? You just hope and pray it's a great situation either, either that he lands it. Yeah, either way, I think you're okay. This is this is a segment of the show called tight ends. These are players that aren't <laughs> wide receivers. They line up on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they block. I don't know if you're familiar with this. In oh. previous years, they would also do these route things, and then the the quarterbacks would throw them the ball, and you'd get points. This year it's different, I think. I don't know what the rule change was with tight ends, but we have to have this segment on the show, and you might have to give some names that you don't want to right now. Yeah, I don't want to, but we will. Um, I think Colby Parkinson, Colby Jack Cheese, we've yeah. we've thrown his name out there a couple of times, and, and it can work okay. <laughs> he had seven targets for, what? you know, four for 33. Just the way you're talking oh. about it, you almost don't want your – you would rather like a an AI yeah. bring these names up so it's not you. Uh you know, the you had a big performance of Tays Taysom Hill, but he got injured again. Um, so I don't know if you're gonna have him. Zach Ertz, you could That's do worse. number one for me. Yeah, Zach Ertz is fine. I mean he was three for twenty two this last week. Like th there's, there's He had a two point conversion. He's on the you, field. You some. take Ertz over Tucker Kraft? I think I'd go I'm going Kraft over Zach Ertz. Do you you have some actual upside with Tucker Craft, he's taken over. We talked about him yesterday. But the team said they didn't want that to happen. They said they, that, but, but they, then they but did we, it. Yeah, but the but both Jordan Love games, Tucker Craft has been, uh, uh, he's he's been decent. Yeah, I mean Musgraves going Mus down. Yeah. Yes, and with the injury to Watson, maybe that's a play this week. Yeah. All right, uh, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. All right, Tucker so Craft, wait, Craft cheese over Colby Jack cheese. Yes. Okay. So it's a cheese, the other guy, cheese based waiver chill. Yeah, I would say uh, Monterey Otten. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <Lord. laughs> Yeah, sorry. Yeah, give them all to me. Why? Give me a Why? You didn't have to do it. We would already gotten through it. Take uh, a lap. Take a lap yeah, around the building. Here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Otten does this from time to time. I wouldn't be banking on it. It happens. It happens three or four times a year. Uh, and Check I will. I'm going to throw out a name. Look, okay, this is because this is watching the trend of what has happened with this player. But Jawan Johnson of New or the New Orleans Saints, you have to remember what has happened f to him for the offseason. The guy had a surgery that took him out basically right, Kyle, if you remember better where it was, but it was like right before training camp. On his body. Camp. No, oh, no, I'm saying the timing. Sorry. It was right before training camp. It was He was out and resting. And – he is his arrow is going up. Foster Moreau's arrow is going down. Of the, and I think that this maybe not this week, although it could be. And then by next week, Juwan Johnson will be back to being the guy at the tight end position, not including Taysom. Yeah, I don't mind. Cause I don't Taysom, mind you mentioning Taysom's it. a Swiss Army knife, but Juwan Johnson has had. You dropping Mark Andrews this week, Mike, and picking up Juwan dude, Johnson. Mark Andrews. Are you going to do that? That's, uh, that's good. We, we, I said we would save the Mark Andrews discussion. But just Juwan Johnson, just to finish it off, like last year, he end, he of three of the – in the playoffs, tight end nine, tight end four, tight end number one. And in 2023 he, or 22, he also had some games. So he's like he's a good player. Uh, thank you, Kyle. was a stress f uh, fracture in his foot that was right before training camp. So it's just – it's taken him some time. All right. The Mark Andrews discussion. You guys avoided the Mark Andrews discussion. Well, we yesterday? we just we we hadn't we didn't want to fully break down what are we doing here with Mark Andrews. So I'm gonna pass it to Jason Moore. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so he has fewer fantasy points in standard <laughs> fewer, scoring leagues, fewer receiving than Jared Goff. Fewer receiving fantasy points. Yeah, because um, Goff caught a touchdown. I mean, in what are standard, we doing now? in standard scoring? So it's it's a really really tough situation because you've got a player who's goosed back-to-back -back weeks um both of it's, those were wins for their not, franchise it's not just the goose it's the routes are low the mm -hmm. snaps are low the utilization and, sucks and it's one target a week that's if you if if mark andrews had four targets and things were just 
wild and wacky in a game like it happens every once in a while, I'd say, yeah, that's fine. I'll play Mark Andrews again. But two targets over two weeks is is uh, just devastating. Isaiah likely is not startable at tight end. No. no. It's, it's, it, the answer is not likely took so, over. So the, 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 the truth is, is that the addition of Derrick Henry has transformed the identity of the offensive side of the football for the Baltimore Ravens. And they are willing and able to Tennessee tighten this. And now you're left with the Chickaconquos of the world. And right now, any on any given day, Mark Andrews can score a touchdown. I, Isaiah likely can score a touchdown. But like if you were going into the week to start one of them, you're probably starting likely. And then if you – and you shouldn't start either of them. Yeah, I, I watched a post-game press conference with John Harbaugh where he was really asked about like Andrews' utilization. And his answer was uh, thoughtful and true in the sense that, you know – it's a team sport, and you know they're Andrews is out there playing very, very well, making big plays for them. It's just you know sometimes it's not going to work in the receiving game. He says he's going to you know th he's positive. There's going to be games this season where he has m a monstrous receiving line, and games where he has nothing. Like it's just whatever the game takes, and I believe that. I think that there will be games where Andrews has 86 yards and six receptions and a touchdown. But it's not going to be what you hoped that he would be, which is a reliable asset. It's not. And so would I drop Mark Andrews for the names for Juwan uh, you know, Johnson? Johnson? No, I personally wouldn't. I wouldn't um, go that. What about but that Tuck? means but just to be clear, you're not starting Mark no. Andrews after two gooses. So that means you'd have to roster two tight ends. I just want to make no. sure that that's out. No, oh, okay. I I am saying I would I would start Mark like when I'm looking at the waiver wire list of options. So like Zach Ertz, would I start Mark Andrews or Zach Ertz? Would I drop Mark Andrews for Zach Ertz? I wouldn't. And and will Zach Ertz score more? Maybe he did this last week. But what did he score more? Three points. Zach Ertz, you know, gets thirty three yards and two receptions or something like that. There's still no upside there. Mark Andrews has a built-in upside, I believe, just based on talent and history and all that. Not the utilization we want, but that's the point. Is like, as a Mark Andrews manager, I'm living this out, and I'm looking at the options and going, who would I literally start over him? And there's plenty of there's plenty of wide receivers, but they're rostered. They're on other people's rosters. There's just you not mean a tight ends. Yes, uh, there there's just not a bunch of. I can't um, guys imagine guys out on the waiver wire that I would be willing to start over Andrews. I can't imagine putting a zero into my lineup for three straight weeks. I can't imagine doing that. It's, and I, that that's a high probability. There's a high probability you get zero from Mark Andrews right now. So that's the truth. Yeah. If you want to I don't know what that means if you roster two tight ends, because I agree maybe something changes down the line, but I cannot fathom recommending me personally not I don't taking blame a you. shot on I'd much rather try Tucker Craft out for a week without Christian Watson. I think I'd much rather play Juwan Johnson without Taysom Hill. I'd much rather play Zach Ertz and hope for a touchdown because I know he's getting targets on the week personally. Tucker Craft, I'm like I have Mark Andrews in league of record. Tucker Craft is a name I would consider. Juwan Johnson's pretty close. Like let's um, let me see what Zach Ertz has, has done in totality. So he did have a game of sixty yards in week two. Ah, dude, I'm I'm I think I'm I'm more on Jason's side of trying to look at the waiver wire of like what is actual upside of the guys who are available. Can they catch a touchdown? Okay, Mark Andrews can too. Is is, is anyone on the waiver wire actually going to get volume? That's what I care about. And of these guys. He it's, has zero catches for two weeks. I know. that This yeah. upside that we're talking about is not based on this season. The upside Agreed. that we're talking well, about. Well, week, week two, he what was – week two, he was, it was four okay. four for 51 in week two. Yeah. But but it's really based on the past seasons, which also didn't really include Isaiah Likely. So those two compounding factors, I don't, I don't think it's impossible for him to have a game here or there. I just can't imagine telling somebody – I mean, this is the number one drop candidate in the entire fantasy football world. Yeah. If you want to keep him on your bench, I mean, look, if you want to play him, Jason says he's going to play him. 
I just think it's a really, really tough call because you're what are the you're the, risking zero. If, and guess what? Five is a lot more than zero when you need something sure. at the tight end please position. Please don't please <laughs> don't hear what I'm not saying. Okay. I don't want to start Mark Andrews. This isn't me banging the table saying like, oh, I'm so excited I get to start Mark Andrews. I'm simply saying of the waiver wire fodder options, Craft, uh, okay, with, with the injury to Watson and his utilization, nine targets last week, uh, granted they had to throw Did like to crazy up. to catch up, but um, okay, you could you could take that and you can, I would bench Andrews. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I am not- still going to keep starting him over that level of just waiver wire fodder. And there's other names that are sitting on the waiver wire. I mean, Pat Fryermuth is on a lot of waiver wires. Pat Tyler Fryer- Conklin is on a lot of waiver wires. Hunter Henry on a lot of waiver wires. Fryermuth. All three has, of those guys I'll are t- on. I'll give you Muth. Yeah, I would, I would play do the him. Muth for sure. I mean, heck, Johnny Munt. I believe the, <laughs> I believe the Muth is the only tight end who's had four receptions in each of the first four weeks yeah, of the season. Yeah, he's sitting on our league of record waiver wire. Yeah, that that Are you one dropping. I mean, I dropped Mark Andrews for Pat Firemuth quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very very difficult. If you're in a ten, it's team, never. If you're in a ten teamer, I'm really not Mark trying. Andrews I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm trying no. to. I'm trying to examine the psychology that exists here for all of us, mm-hmm. which is that a 29 year old, all pro, Hall of Fame contending. Or pathway. When he was on the path, uh, yes. On the path. When that player goes from maybe the best in the game, production wise, to maybe the worst in four games to start the year, yep. this yep. is not something we're used to. This is not something that anybody understands. This is not something that has been shown in the film. I came in in week one and told you about the film. Mm-hmm. The film is backed up by the numbers. The numbers say he was separating better than every tight end in football. So now you have the film and the numbers well, and, you saw that and the head two. coach saying he's playing great football. So you have all of those things telling you that Mark Andrews is the same player. But we've also gone through this. I mean, look at last year, David Njoku went from a five-year bust to the best tight end in football over the back half of the year. Did, Na- did David Njoku become a, like, take steroids halfway through the year and become a different athlete? He's been the same guy. Evan Ingram, bust for five years, became a star. It's opportunity for tight ends more than any other position. You can be a superstar athlete. I mean, Juwan Johnson was the number one tight end. He can go to nothing. And that's what's happening to Mark Andrews. This is not the retirement ceremony. He's probably going to get another contract in the NFL. Oh, for that's sure. That's what's wild about the situation. And so I'm not trying to I'm not trying to argue. I'm trying to just speak from the other side of like, if you started double zeros. I can't imagine doing it again. I get it. I get it. But does it hurt more to not do it and then it happens? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, personally, based on this conversation of the the waiver wire fodder, that's why I would not be dropping him. If you want to roster two, you can roster two. But it, For a week, you yeah, know? Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things where... If he gooses again, will you do it? If he gooses a triple thir- goose, yes, triple goose, triple you go- goose, uh, triple is goose like- you got to go. But I mean, literally, <laughs> literally, you know, t- you know, before the gooses, the he had five targets and and over fifty yards and was involved. And this is not a guy who looks bad on film. And if you look at his it's career, so confusing. You look at his career. He has averaged. Here's the you know last year per game basis, he averaged eleven point three fantasy points, ten point three fantasy points the year prior. He's double-digit fantasy point average in games started. That's just – he hasn't disappeared, and he hasn't changed well, who he is. I get the opportunity The argument. snaps are way down. Yes. They're way down. The snaps are 33% way down. 33% two weeks ago, 46% last week. And, and another factor, which you could say, well, why wasn't he part of the, uh, the scoring plan? at the beginning? But at halftime against the Buffalo Bills, it was 21-3. to three. Uh, at halftime against the Dallas Cowboys, it was twenty-one to six, and th- like this, it, it even when Mark Andrews was doing everything, this was a run-heavy team. Yep, uh, and yeah, that, and like, when that's, it ends, that's, it. that's that's the philosophy of it. But if you're up twenty-one to three or twenty-one to six, they're not they're not opening it up. No, no, they won't need to. So again, the, uh, the question of how was he not part of it? Well, I guess the Bills was because Derrick Henry had a uh, whatever eighty-plus yard rushing touchdown. So that it's it's all this 
potpourri of uh, just like this so nasty. It's a, it's a poopery. It's it's a, you can it's go a with it. Yeah, it's a poopery. It's, it's a nasty stew that I'm. I don't know what's going oh, on here. I don't like poopery no, like and it stew being in the same <laughs> no, thought no, process. That's, this is, that's a real falcon yeah, situation. Well, I don't like playing Mark Anders. Yeah. Um, it's I, a real Falcon. I, I do want to throw one other name oh, out Falcon, there. Oh, Falcon, you're still here? At tight end. You didn't, you didn't take off halfway through, huh? That's um, good. Yeah, did you, did you, I don't know if you're aware. Well, uh, he did leave Oh, yesterday? yeah. Oh, oh he, yeah. He had to take off and, and mid, oh, he took off. mid show dump. <laughs> Are you, get your bowels <laughs> we're just, checked. We're just talking about this now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Just I mean. like out in the open? Well, he did it. When one of your, when one of the cast of characters from Deucer's Alley is all of a sudden gone halfway through the show, you got to draw attention the, the, to it. It's incredible because we named Deucer's Alley well before he was employed by this company. Yeah. And he took it to heart. He is. He we, really we hired took, the right It's not person. literal. It's short for producer. Did you not know that? <laughs> Didn't know that. Okay. okay. You all don't right. have yeah. to eat x lax for breakfast. <laughs> no. Um, the Sorry. What was the other name you are going to mention? The last name, he's available in 25% of leagues if you don't have an IR spot in your league. David Njoku might just be sitting out there on waivers, and you just heard the conversation we had. So if he's out what's, there, what's uh, what's old Hawkinson sitting at? What's uh, his roster percentage? He's still a couple weeks away from coming back, but they I, uh, but they're, they're expecting Njoku to, to practice this week. So at, at least just check. All right, defensively, look at the Vikings against the Jets. They're heavily rostered though because they've been awesome. Look at the Seahawks defense against the Giants this week. Look at Denver. The Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos. Oh, I picked that up a week ahead, and I'm happy because I don't think I don't think Adams is playing, and that Vegas offense, 18 carries, three points. Is the, that what Zemir White's doing? Mm -hmm. The real low roster defenses are the Denver Broncos, which that's fabulous, and then the New England Patriots at three percent gets to play the Miami Dolphins, and then the uh, the Raiders on the other side of the Denver matchup. Denver won with 60 passing yards last week, so. Um, Today's waiver wire brought to you by Amazon Business. Everyone could use more time. Thankfully, Amazon Business offers smart business buying solutions so you can spend more time growing your business and less time doing the admin. I can see why they call it smart. Learn more at amazonbusiness.com. Full stream ahead. All right. Uh, well, we had the Mark Andrews conversation. How's it feel after that? How, how do you feel that we we had it? I mean, I, we, it's out there. I I feel like I like need to shower. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's the stew. All right, <laughs> my stream of the week. I'm doing it, gentlemen, and I'm I'm doing it. it. I'm doing it because the Jacksonville Jaguars are the worst team in fantasy through four weeks. They give up an ev an extra six point five points uh, to opposing quarterbacks. And uh, I'm going with the 39.7-year-old yep. Joe Flacco, who is eight days younger than Anthony Richardson's <laughs> oh, mother. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so Joe Flacco, if he gets the start, I'm putting him right in. And frankly, if Richardson gets the start, I'm putting him right in against Jacksonville, um, which is, you know, not something I've said for four weeks. Sure. So. Joe Flacco is the stream of the week. I'll jump in because my quarterback streamer is on the other side. Uh, the Jaguars have been bad against quarterbacks. The Indianapolis Colts have been terrible against quarterbacks as well. Four points above expectation. It's Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he is not a QB that I love or want to be rostering very much. But in this particular matchup against the Colts, I think he's going to come through with a game that is uh, it is very streamable. And for my streamer, I'm going to go with a guy who right now is the quarterback six on the season. Yeah, baby. And if you haven't, you you might have seen last night that this guy is playing ball, but he looks yeah. great. Geno Smith has been very, very, very good. Um, we talked about how long it's been since Patrick Mahomes has had a 21 point fantasy game. Uh, Geno did it last night. Uh, you three of his four weeks, he's Dude, been top he's ten got three in fantasy. Elite pass catching options and two elite pass catching running backs and an offensive system now that is not led by Shane Waldron uh the grub system I mean he's on pace for over 5,000 passing yards the the game against the New York Giants they're a middle of the pack defense um and and the best part is his touchdown rate is kind of lagging behind right now we saw a couple years ago him throw plenty of touchdowns we know he can do it yeah two and a half percent right now for Gino that's that's, that's below, abnormal. That will catch up. Yeah, so I, I think he's a, a good stream this you week. You dropping Patrick Mahomes for him, who just <laughs> oh. lost Rashi Rice? 
I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up no, no, the no. will you drop Pat question every week. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is a streaming candidate, which means if you are a streaming quarterback, you are someone that you pick up for matchups and you drop them to the waiver Except wire. Except for if you drop him, he'll get picked up and kept for the whole year. 100%, which is why, and we, we've said this with other people, We've you know, Andrews probably can't do it anymore, but a couple weeks ago when there was concern, you trade these guys. And we brought up trading Patrick Mahomes yep. uh, before the Rushy Rice injury, and hopefully you got it done, but, but try to get it done. All right. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't drop him if I had him, to be honest. I would just pick up somebody else to play. And then try to play him on a match if you like. I have him. Yeah, I've got Mahomes in one league, and I have tried to trade him for weeks. Nobody, nobody's biting. No, you're looking for Mahomes. I know. I want you're looking value. For Mahomes value. I want someone to fall in love with the name. All right. Tomorrow we've got hungry for more of the TNF preview. We got your mailbag questions on the show tomorrow. We're gonna get you right and ready to go for week five, and then Thursday and Friday starts of the week. We got the matchups, and then we got the wheel of shame again. Mm. Oh. Huh? Huh? I'm lo I love that segment. Yeah. So far, three three weeks. I yeah. love it. It's All a good I know time. is Brandon Ayuk and my tight end couldn't get me <laughs> eight combined Whee! full PPR points. Oh, it's so great. And uh, reminder before I close things out: go to jointhefoot.com, become a supporter of the show, get access to premium content, including you know the Stream Finder tool, the Ultimate Dashboard, where you get a lineup optimizer, you get a custom waiver wire list, which is great for today. You get an extra episode of the show every week and probably like 20 more things, right? Uh, Papa Josh over there in the – let's give him one more <laughs> look. He looks so happy in the Falcons gear. Papa Josh, remind me, who is your favorite NFL team? The Saints. Oh, come on now. What was that again? I didn't hear Oh, no, uh, the Dirty Birds, sorry. All right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll do it. He won't even say the name. No, he <laughs> won't. Uh, but um, they made him say the name, didn't they? That'll do it for today's show. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.